Um, right. Congress isn't done. Okay, you heard that first from me. I'm not going to go into any more detail. But if you think Congress this is one and done, you're mistaken. Like I said, we're not done. We're, we're not through yet with this conversation. Um, you can see the headlines from this week alone that uh, things were put into 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 motion some time ago. Again, I don't talk about it, but you're now seeing that. And I've left hints all along the way. And if you think Congress is going to leave this alone, whoever thinks that is is sadly mistaken. They are more energized now than ever. You have people like Congressman Tim Burchett and Congressman Gallegos, opposite sides of the aisle. Senators Marco Rubio and Senator Gillibrand, again, opposite sides of the aisle, coming together on this and saying, wait a minute now, DOD, wait a minute, Intel community. We're seeing a lot of stuff up here. You can't give us answers to these, and that doesn't look like a 737. So you better figure this out, and, and you better figure out a way to have a conversation with the American people because we, Congress, is being held is being held accountable to the American people, to our constituents. So you damn well better believe we're going we're gonna to be talking to our constituents. That was Lou Elizondo on UFO Man YouTube. It's just an amazing interview this past Saturday. Lou, it looks like he's gotten through the gauntlet. He's obviously under a ton of pressure from Gary Reed, who was fired. He was obfuscating, saying saying that Lou didn't work at ATIP. Uh, he was a liar the whole time. It turns out, surprise, Lou was the man of honor, man of integrity. He's the one who's actually been fighting for our for transparency and for information. I'm just so happy to see him out there. He's, he's doing great and looks like we're just still on track, but it's going to take all of us. Okay. So amazing interview. I recommend you watch it all the way through. It's a great interview, but we'll go through some of the, the key points that I found from it. First is disclosures already happened. Everybody we've already got disclosure. Think about that one. Watch this. The one thing I want you to make clear to the people in the chat room is that we've already had disclosure and now we're working on transparency. And yeah, correct. Yeah, disclosure is already happened. Look, you've had two, two former directors of, of CIA. You have two former presidents of the United States of America. You have current director of national intelligence and the current deputy secretary of defense. Uh, and now a current director, a NASA, a NASA administrator, and also, by the way, Congress telling you it's real. Um, I don't know what else you want. That, that, that's, that's, that's disclosure. Um, it may not look and feel the way you think. It's not a Hollywood movie. You're not going to get someone standing up at a podium and, and addressing the world. Uh, that address has already been made. You don't have to make it. You know, now let's right. move on. Let's move to transparency. Other countries have come up with yet Japan entering into a bilateral information sharing agreement with the United States for sole purposes of sharing UFO information. Wow. It, it's wow. occurred, guys. It doesn't, that doesn't happen unless you have disclosure. So we're there. We 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 right. have disclosure now. What we need is 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 transparency, and what we need is understanding. Uh, and and that's that's kind of where we are right now in, in the playbook. Wow, that's amazing. So basically, disclosure has already happened. You know, you mentioned there is a bilateral agreement between the U.S. and Japan looking into UAP evidence. I think that's it. Disclosures happened. They just don't know even how to communicate it to us without freaking everybody out. Is what it sounds like. And that's going to be a tough decision, right? That's going to be a tough conversation. Can you imagine that going back now, we're going to have to question everything. Now you have to question Roswell. Now you have to question, <laughs> you have to question so much, man. This is going to be a difficult, difficult conversation. You can understand why they don't want to admit it or even look into it. You know, can you imagine going back? Now you got to question, what about JFK? Why did why was JFK assassinated? Right, we still can't look at the files on that. <laughs> There's a conspiracy that he ten days prior he sent a, a memo to requesting to look at the information on the UFO files. Ten days prior to assassination, I mean, you know, it opens up a lot of worms. It opens up a lot of worms. You said that humanity will have a somber reaction when we find out the full truth. How will we feel after finishing your book? And does somber equal sad and gloomy? Um, no, somber isn't sad or gloom. Somber is serious. Somber is is a, 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 a tugging on the back of your shirt uh, and 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 stopping you from 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 falling off of a cliff. Whoa! Holy crap! That was a cliff. Whew! Thank you. You know, somber is um, is uh, 
standing up and 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 singing the national anthem at a sports event it's it's prideful but it's it's somber it means pe people have sacrificed and died for that for that privilege right so um i think um when i when i say somber i i, I mean it quite literally um and it's yeah it's up for interpretation for some people because some people you know don't i mean some people aren't going to don't really care about this topic and it won't have any effect on it because they don't just like the same people who when they when they you know sing the national anthem don't don't feel that sense of pride um you know it's just people are different unfortunately and and that's okay you know i mean it's people are entitled so it makes this country so great because people are entitled to not care if they really don't want to you know if you want to go watch the kardashians or, or monday night football then, then good let's make you a bad person um it, this topic isn't necessarily the topic that that look there's people who can't even can't even comprehend the topic i, I gave i kind of giving the briefing no offense to the individual if he's listening but i gave a brief to a very very senior to the official like like one of the very top and i remember him after an hour and a half giving the briefing showing the videos of them, not those that other videos classified videos pictures and reports and the, 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 some of the key reports that came in he looked at me with a total blank stare and he said so lou how are those uh Miami hurricanes doing this season oh, wow and uh wow he just couldn't do it. And then I got another call from the secretary's <clears throat> office. Hey, listen, you may probably not want to brief him again. You need to brief this other person. He, he, he can't. He can't really absorb it. I mean, this is going to be what what we're up against. You know, I mean, imagine that. Imagine learning that everything you thought was correct or true about the world isn't. I, I don't know. For me, I, I don't. I always felt that way. Whenever I walk outside, you know, I look up and, and I and I just imagine and during the day you can kind of see some stars, right? But you know at night there's nothing there. And you look up, that's the whole universe that we can see at least. Right? You can see everything. And you're just above you is nothing. You know, I mean think about that. But this has always been the case. You know, we've we've always been wrong. If you look back at our history, that that's just progress. That's how progress is. Okay. The funny thing is we just always think we know everything. We always think we know, and then we're just shocked when we find out new stuff about the universe. You know, when we found out the earth was round, I'm sure it was shocking. But we adapted, we progressed, took a few hundred years to convince everybody on the planet that we were on a ball, and, and then even today, right, we're having issues now. Now we have flat earth, right? People are still not willing to believe it. They just can't, they just can't believe it, right? The implications are so big. It, it's a simple concept, but actually fully understanding it is difficult. And I think that's what we're really lacking here is our government has been kind of ignoring it for many reasons, okay, that Lou does highlight shortly here. But now that it's come out, now the key is gonna be on actually understanding it because it sounds like there is no real understanding going on. We, we don't know what's going on. And that that's gonna be the difficult part is, is showing that, right? For the, for the US government, other governments to show that they don't know what's going on actually. And they can't understand it. That's a pretty big, pretty big admission. Yeah, I mean, again, does it make him a bad person? No, he was actually a, a pretty damn good executive for the Department of Defense. But this topic, just he couldn't, he couldn't process it. It's beyond. Uh, and uh, we are a species that likes boundaries. We like a species. In some cases, that's probably why we have organized religion and organized governments and institutions because we like. Limited. We look. If you tell somebody, look, you're actually there's no such thing as up or down. You're sitting on a ball, and you, chances are you're probably standing upside down on this ball as it's hurling through space. It's just gravity sucking you here, and there is no such thing as being here tomorrow because the Earth is spinning around the Sun, which is moving around the galaxy uh, at thousands and thousands of miles an hour. You'll never be in the same place again in your life ever. In fact, ever, 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 ever in the in, for the duration of the of the universe. Nothing is static. Everything is moving. There is no here. The notion of here isn't even real. That's a concept that that is very disturbing for people because they're like, no, I'm here. I'm in my house right now. I'm in my living room. I'm in my little city. And I'm going to go to the grocery store and get my, my, my things. Well, okay, that's kind of an illusion because, again, nothing is static. Everything is changing around you right now. You are changing yourself. Um, and that's disturbing for a lot of people. You know, when you realize just 
take a look. I tell people you want to you want to know where we are. Take a look at Carl Sagan's the famous picture uh, titled by Carl Sagan, "The Pale Blue Dot." And what you'll see is just black screen, and in the very middle of that screen, this little tiny, maybe four pixels wide, a little blue dot. That's Earth. Everything you've ever learned, everything you heard or read about, every person, every human being, every 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 fraction of history that has ever been known ever to our species occurred on that tiny little dot in the vastness of the universe. Um, there's a whole lot more to the universe than that little sure. dot. Sure. So that's that's that that not everybody is really you know prepared or willing to have that conversation yet because once you do you 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 realize that then you have to start questioning everything else right mm-hmm. okay so now is my religion valid right is my culture valid is the way I was raised valid did mommy and daddy teach me the right things right is my government valid and is it correct and is it right and is it just right does it have the interests of the American people at its heart do laws and rules really mean what they mean Right. Or are they just there as control measures? And again, I don't want to get conspiratorial because that's not that's not my intent. I'm just simply drawing, uh, comparing and contrasting for some people. When you go down that rabbit hole, of, oh, my God, UAPs, UFOs are real. The natural cascade begins and people start to question everything. And so that's very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, I don't think questioning is bad. And I don't think at the end of the day, if you were to be, be, once you get engaged in this topic enough and you realize what's going, to some degree what's going on, um, I don't think it necessarily, it, 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 it diminishes anyone's personal values. I don't think it diminishes religion at all, organized religion or spirituality. I don't think it diminishes the need for governance and government. I don't think it diminishes anything. But you have to go down that rabbit hole. Such wisdom there from... Lou Alzandi, you can see that's probably the path he's gone down, right? And I don't know. For me, just personally, I've I've kind of felt this way my whole life growing up, honestly. I really just thought I was <laughs> surrounded by everyone around me was just crazy. Um, and then if you think everyone around you is crazy, then what it really points is that you're crazy, right? And so you just end up thinking that you're, yourself is crazy. And so you censor yourself. You limit yourself and you just – you tend to believe what everyone else believes because that's comfortable, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we're all humans. At least the people I'm talking to are all humans. And we can only do what our biological systems uh, allow us to do, okay? And a lot of that is going to be bias. You have something biased. There's a filter on all of us that filters whatever we're looking at right now, right? This thing we call the real world uh, that we call that I think no one really understands. I think anyone that says that they understand everything that's going on is is not correct. I think they they fall into the same trap as the past. Okay, we've always thought we we've, we've always thought that we know what's going on. Just always. That's that's the nature of progress. That's how time works. As humans, we always think we know what's going on. That's it. I'm on a ball. Everything makes sense. The world makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Does it? You know, when you look up at night, okay, and there's nothing above you, and you can see the Milky Way galaxy, and you're standing on this rotating ball, and and like Lou just explained, you'll never be in that position ever again. You know, those are some big thoughts. And, And for me, it's just when I go on YouTube and I watch the galaxy, okay, if you watch any sort, David Butler, amazing, amazing YouTuber, you know, watch evidence, learn about our actual galaxies. Learn about the universe around that we're actually seeing. Learn about the microcosms. All of this stuff will bring us greater understanding. Is it going to ruin the earth? Probably not. I mean, you know, what's going to ruin the earth is us allowing our governments to do nuclear war against each other, which is about the dumbest possible thing we can imagine. Okay, if you don't think something's messed up in our world, imagine that our countries, America, Russia, China, whoever else, at least America, has used nuclear weapons before on other countries. I mean, think about that. You know, does that make sense? Is that for the good of humanity, using nuclear weapons? Having nuclear weapons on Earth, is that really for the good of humanity? I don't know. Are we building these weapons for something else that we don't know about? Is there some secret organization? You know, I mean, 
the the key the best point is going to be transparency everybody transparency and understanding so you know i i would submit to you that the mere fact that they're here and and showing up the way that they are they are definitely communicating with us maybe we don't understand yet precisely what they're trying to say or communicate but i i i'm we are under under strong impression right now within the government that communication has already been established now let me preface because people are going to say that oh the news confirming that you know eisenhower and we had the secret agreement that's not what i'm saying what i'm simply saying is that there are ways to communicate intent there's all sorts of ways right if i stick up my middle finger to you right now you, i'm communicating <laughs> a, a, an intent uh, if i go to you and i do this right harder forgive me the big sausage fingers but you know if i do this uh, i'm communicating you know an intent and expression so I think we have to be careful when we say, is there going to be any effort in the future for them to communicate? Because I think they already have. I, I think we're beyond that. Communication is going on. You just heard it right there from Lou Elizondo. What does that communication mean? You know, what are we, we're expecting disclosure and alien contact communication to look like the movies, right? But that's obviously some figment or that's, <laughs> that's just our imagination, essentially. The reality is they are communicating we're trying to communicate from what we can tell, at least what, what Lou just said there, and the U.S. government believes this, we just don't understand what they're communicating, okay? We just don't understand, and and that makes sense, right? If, if, if this all comes to light, which looks like it's going to come to light very soon, that all of this was hidden or at least obfuscated by elements of the government, okay, you saw there, it sounds like most of the actual U.S. government didn't know, didn't know what was going on. The leaders that Lou Elizondo is talking about right there, those are the leaders of the government that are supposed to have this information so that they can make the correct calls, right? Unless they don't have a need to know. So it sounds like disclosures happen. Communication has been ongoing. We just don't know what they're trying to communicate or even understand what the hell's going on. And based on limiting all the information, keeping it super squirrel secret, not allowing your scientists to actually look at it, we haven't been able to share the information among our government to actually figure out what's going on. <laughs> so that's basically where we're at right now is we know something's out there. We know something's been here for a long time. We know we've lied about it. And it sounds like we may have lied about it for reasons we think are very legitimate and serious. Listen to this from Lou Elizondo. I mean, when the United States government actually comes out there and all but admits it, frankly did admit it, you know, that these things are basically out there. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they're from. But, you know, these things are real. They're of substance. But that's a that's a big step, considering that we've been shut down for the last 60 or 70 years every uh, single Tommy, time someone's asked. You're absolutely right. But let me go one step further here. What I'm going to say is probably going to be very controversial. And, and probably, I suspect, if not you, Tommy, maybe you, Tim, will, will disagree with what I'm about to say. But let me say this with all due respect and deference. Um, the gatekeepers of this information before ATIP, Okay. Um, we, we must show some, we must show some reservation. Okay. We cannot be out for blood. I know people say, well, we've been had this for 70 years. We want people accountable. We need to put them in jail. And we need... Look, I, I get it guys. I, I really do. But, but there are some people there that decisions were made that are, they're really, they're, they're not bad people. They, they made decisions at the time because, they felt in their heart of hearts it was in the best interest of the, of, of, of the American people. Um, they, these people, some of them are, are, are true patriots, and it's a heavy burden that they had to carry. And I know it's hard people to, to get this, wrap their, their hands around this and say, well, there's no way anybody can excuse running extra governmental efforts, you know, outside the Constitution on this topic. Look, I, I don't disagree, but until four months ago, um, you know, I, I I was given uh, an explanation that actually I, I respected. I understood. I, again, I don't mean to be qualified. I don't agree with it, but I can now at least understand why somebody would have kept this information so secret for so long to include not even talking to a president uh, at times. And, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it, I would just tell people if I could remind people that these are other human beings that really a lot of them were really trying to do the right thing. Some of them weren't got you. And for those, they're going to be held accountable, you know, put them in front of uh, a spotlight and hang them by their toes. Right. But, uh, 
you know, there are there are a lot of them there that really weren't doing doing what they thought was their patriotic duty. And I want to make sure that we make it clear that we can't make this a witch hunt. We can as much as we want to, as much as we're we're, we're pissed off and, and, and frustrated. That's not the answer. Uh, the answer is going to be um, it's going to have to be a more gentle approach. It, we're going to have to rather than raise a fist, we're going to have to hand, extend a hand uh, in a handshake. Uh, and, and I know that's tough, but uh, I'll just I'll just offer that as that, you know, that's fair. Kind of yeah. But in order to evolve and become better, we have to be we have to hear it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, you know, it's, it's not a matter of being ready as a society. I think the species is very resilient. I, I think that is that is the definition of adaptation. If we want to evolve and adapt and overcome, ultimately overcome. We have to be, we have to be 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 accepting of 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 new paradigms of new realities, mm-hmm. and we shouldn't necessarily fear them. Um, again, this goes back to us living in our nice neat little boxes where we like everything orderly and everything predictable. But life really isn't predictable; it's an illusion. We've, we've told that lie to ourselves, but 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 it is not predictable at all. In fact. You know, uh, our, our, our part of the solar system right now, the little, you know, solar system, the sun and the, and the planets, are heading into an interesting part of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it's it's to, to one of the, in fact, if you look at the background of your screen right now that you have for your audience, you see these beautiful Magellanic clouds uh, in the background. Well, that's a lot of dust. That's a lot of matter. That's a lot of stuff that's, that's making up those clouds. And, and we are at a point where we are heading into one of those bands. Um, you know, all havoc could break loose at any minute, any time. You could, you mm-hmm. could have, you know, uh, an existential issue where now all of a sudden the entire planet is now under threat uh, of being being vaporized. Right and now, people don't like to think about that, but this is reality. And, and- <laughs> we're just all in this pale little blue dot flying through space. <laughs> really, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, the fact that we're not expecting a paradigm shift should surprise should surprise us, right? I mean, for me, I grew up just lo- walking around just like in a daze, essentially. Like, what are we looking at? What are we doing here? And I thought everybody around me was crazy, you know? And when you think everybody around you is crazy, what ends up, the final solution is that you think you're crazy, okay? And it's just an amazing vindication, you know, this UAP event. It's really just to open my eyes, open my mind. I think open a lot of people's minds that, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. The world does not have to be as messed up and terrible as it is. There's so many beautiful things in the world. It's so enjoyable to be alive. I, I love being alive. I love being my family. I feel blessed more than anybody. Uh, like Lou talks about his family, man. I, I feel the same thing. Um yeah, just a general joy for being alive, and I, and I think that's amazing. And and we and we can do that. We can have that without having all the other, all the other negative stuff along with it. But it's going to take understanding that that's really what we need, and and coming together as a community. That's what Lou talks about. It, you know, he says at the end here that yeah, he's just one voice on a whole movement, and really it was, it was the grassroots Congress being motivated by all you guys out there, all of us really, uh, the community. You know, this is it. I think this is decentralization. This is what Web 3 will bring, right? Web 2 that we're looking at right now is YouTube. So I'm talking into a into just a microphone here and a, and a screen, right? And then you watch it in your home. But we're still communicating in some way. And now we're moving forward into Web 3. And this is just going to be the information age. You know, Web 3 is what we're trying to leverage. I'm trying to leverage Web 3 for the Lato Files program. And that's a community. Just like Lou talks about, you know, he can't do it alone. He's under so much pressure. I, I feel the pressure, man. I was crying in my car last week, you know, just under so much pressure. Uh, it's such a difficult topic. It really needs to be all of us. It needs all of us be engaged on this in a community. If we're, if we're all in a community and we build the right community, that's why I'm building the Lato Files to create a Galileo type project, grassroots, decentralized, open source, right? You guys own it. I don't even want to own it, I want to just create this thing and have it run autonomously, create the community, because it has to be all of us. It, we can't just put all the pressure under Lou, man. I mean, he can take a ton. He's like a diamond, just all this focused energy on him, just 
just transmitting it, but um, it takes all of us. And that's that's what the movement's been. You know, Congress is motivated. That is Congress. Congress is, is the people. And, it, you know, I left the U.S. because I was really disheartened um, by our treatment of the Constitution, uh, our politics, our inability to look at uh, logic and reason and evidence, our lack of uh, integrity in our leaders. Um, but, you know, this is, it's a change, and, and we can always learn. You know, my last video was very... You know, it was inflammatory. I get fired up. You know, Doc, focus on uh, Yates and Post and, and even Reed. You know, I think at the end of the day, in their heart of hearts, they were probably doing what they thought was right, you know. We're just, we're all human. We're humans. We're monkeys. And we're put into this complicated system, right? We don't really know what's going on. Sure looks like we're inside of a large organism. I made this before. <laughs> There's many other, other uh, analogies. But I think it does require compassion, okay? We're going to find out that uh, we probably did lie to ourselves. We've probably been lying to ourselves for many decades now in, in at least the U.S. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, right? The truth usually hurts, but it's not a surprise we've been wrong. We're always wrong. You're always wrong in the past. You need to evolve. As Lou talks about, we need to evolve as a species. You're never prepared to have kids. You're never prepared to get married or have some life-changing event. But at the end of the day, guys, we're all here. We're all in the same little blue dot. Our kids are all going to live in the same world. They're all going to breathe the same air. You know, if the sooner we can band together, get more understanding about the universe, and focus our efforts to figure out transparency, understanding. Let's go for peace. <laughs> you know, is it so impossible? Is it so hard to not shoot each other, to treat each other with, with respect, to treat the earth with, with respect? I mean, can we not look back at, at old human traditions at the earth and and see this can can we not look up and realize that we're all going to die okay you're all going to die we're all going to die could happen right now literally could happen literally right now meteor could hit us right now we have no idea that meteors are coming you think we're really watching this dust that we're going into the dust that makes up all the universe i love we just call it dust yeah it's just dirt out there just dirt yeah, I mean, it's awesome, man. I'm excited. I mean, imagine that Star Trek is real. Imagine Star Trek is real. I mean, that is awesome, right? Isn't that awesome? And we can make it the way we want. We can make it the way we want, but it's going to take understanding. It's going to take compassion, okay? We're going to have to, we don't need to go and, and witch hunt these people and track them down and, and you know, and I would have done something different if I was in your position. No, you wouldn't have, man. You would not have. You wouldn't have. That's the whole point. That's why. These are strong people, man. These are good people for the most part, right? They got to that position. But it's the system, okay? It is the system. You have to realize you're in a large system, right? That guy removed from the system, not the same thing. Okay, Gary Reed now as a civilian is not the same thing, right? Obviously. So Gary Reed in that position, the position he was in, that is something. That's a new thing, okay? That's a new thing. It's a new position, a new organism or node inside of an organism, if you will. So just a, a, a great interview from Lou Elizondo. I'm going to try and get more, more videos out there like this, get more information out there. I'm trying to analyze crop circles right now. I'm really interested in crop circles. It seems like just, um, it seems like something that hasn't been fully investigated and we could get a lot of information from that. Speaking of communication, maybe this is one way that the phenomena is communicating with us. Maybe it can communicate somehow through crop circles. So if you have any info on crop circles, man, please please forward it to me. I'd like to make a video uh, this week, do some serious investigation into that. As always, thank you for being here. The most important thing right now is building a strong and vibrant Discord community. Okay, I found this video through Discord from Cal, man. Thank you, Cal, on, on our Discord. Discord is a decentralized program, okay? So no one controls Discord, as far as I understand, is us. We control Discord. We will censor it or not censor it. If people aren't behaving, if they're not coming here with humility and respect, we're going to ban them, okay? The point is to create a community here, right, where we can find out this information. We can come together as a community. UAPX, Sky360, SCU, Galileo, man, whoever's out there, let's work together. Let's make this thing work transparency get the information out there and, and find the truth you know is that so is that so much to ask is it so much to ask as always you want to support the channel go to patreon.com forward slash chris lato uh, i have uh, live streams monthly live streams as well all the way up to audio chats and live video chats if you want to talk with me 
and get into the investigation firsthand. That's the best way to support the channel. And for free, just come to the Discord. It is open. Link is in the description. Please, please join our Discord. Join our community. Make the Lado Files NFT project a success. You will, you will not be disappointed. I promise. You will not be disappointed, man. We are here and we're serious. Have a great week, guys.